Nobody. I need to show off again. what? You a goon or you faking real tough talk? Only goons get it shaking real tough talk. I hope your bite is like your bark with that tough talk. This is what New York been missing real tough talk. You a goon or you faking real tough talk? Only goons get it shaking real tough talk. I hope your bite is like your bark with that tough talk. This is what New York been missing real tough talk. What's going on, people? I want to thank you once again for joining us. I'm Stephen J. I'm here with Ghost, and we want to welcome y'all to Real Tough Talk Brooklyn Edition. We have a lot of big games coming up, and as you saw in the beginning, we start out with Lou just letting everybody know how he feels about his team going forward in the league, Blackout. Well, Blackout's been pretty much on fire in this league so far. Um, it seems like no matter what division they play in, they come out with a win. There's no team that seems like they can challenge them. So obviously, if you're on that team, you're going to feel like nobody can beat you at that point. Well, we're going to get into that game a little later. But we're going to talk, is Lou putting a bullseye on his team's back? Especially when you got other teams like the Rebels, SYS, different type of teams that's prepared bullies, that's prepared to try to get to where Blackout is and dethrone them as one of the top teams in the league. So we're gonna see if Lou, what, if Lou actually what he did was cocky or confident. We'll see what's going on. We're gonna, the first game we're gonna talk about is the heavy hitters versus SYS. SYS come in with some people know with YMM players. They got Rico, they got Jeremy, they got Nelson, and they got Bones playing with them. And they combine those with the SYS guys, and they people feel that they got a, a dynasty team in the BQFL. All they did was take a talented team and just bring more talent to this team. And with talent like like the guys that you just mentioned, the sky's the limit with them. It's all up to them on how well they play and how well the SYS play and meld with them to show how far that they're really going to go. But like I just said, the sky's the limit for them. And heavy, hit, heavy hitters come in with a lot of people not really talking about them. They got a real good team. They got Ruben, who's a quarterback of the team. Um, he's really good. He was throwing, I, I believe he threw for Gucci, and he also had Fish, who I think is a young upcoming player. So this team has a lot of playmakers, a lot of players that can take them, you know, to the promised land, but nobody's really talking about them because they don't seem to come with a whole gang of people. They got their little core, but they play every week. And they play every week and they play hard, so just because a team is, a, you know, smaller and less known, a lot of teams are going to look them off and say that they're not a danger to them. And the heavy hitters have that ability to sneak up and steal wins from a lot of teams just by the, 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 the guys playing as hard as they do every game. That being said, we're going to jump right into the game with SYS playing heavy hitters. Heavy hitters going to get the ball on second down. Who's going to throw a pass? So number 21 in the middle is going to be broken up by 22. And you would think that Ruben would get the message on being careful with his throws. But on the very next play, he's going to overthrow a pass to his receiver, number five in the middle, and it's going to be picked off here by Sky, giving SYS back the ball, and Ruben can't make these type of throws. He's an experienced quarterback, heavy hitters, Roman to put up points, not um, getting turnovers. And as you can see in this play, he clearly overthrows him. I, be I believe if he would have brought the ball down a little bit lower, that would have been a decent game for their, um, for their offense. Unfortunately, he was off target, something that you cannot do against a, a defense like SYS because they will capitalize every given chance they get, and Sky is able to make a great play on that. Great interception by Sky. Next play, Nelson's going to get the ball back after the turnover by Sky. Nelson's going to throw a pass, two balls in the middle. Zone's going to be picked off, but he's going to start the ball moving. Then Nelson's going to throw shorts at number nine, start the drive, moving the ball, doing what Nelson's doing. He's confident. He's going to throw a nice pass. In the corner of the end zone, two Rico for the touchdown. Definitely great throw by Nelson, keeping the rhythm going. Finds one of his favorite guys, Rico in the end zone for the touchdown. And this is just a lights out connection right here. This is somebody that he's already used to throwing. So obviously he's going to end up finding Rico eventually. He finds him in the corner of the end zone. This is pretty much routine for them. And 
If you're the heavy hitters, you should know that Rico is one of the main guys he's going for on offense. So you should actually try your best to lock him up and find out where he's going. Because if not, it's going to be touchdowns like that all day. Ruben's going to throw the Migs on the sideline for a decent game. Then he's going to follow up to Chaito in the end zone and it's going to be dropped. Follow up with the next play, he's going to throw in the end zone. It's going to be incomplete and turn over on down. And I think on the down before, Chaito got to make this catch. Bad drop by Chaito in the end zone. That could have been a touchdown if he would have held on to that pass. And that's all it takes, holding on to a pass. He didn't do that. He's, he makes a bad play here, and it costs a turnover, something that they don't need at this point. And it's giving SYS more opportunities to get up ahead in this game. Nelson's going to throw the ball to Jeremy in the middle for a huge game. Then follow up with a pass to number 81 on the sideline for a few yards. Then Nelson's going to throw a pass to Jeremy in the middle in the end zone and it's going to be dropped. But what I like about this play is Nelson doesn't get discouraged. He comes back the next play and he's going to find Rico in the end zone for the touchdown. Rico's second touchdown of the game with Bones extra point. That's going to give him the 14-0 lead. Great throw by Nelson, keeping the confidence even though Jeremy dropped the pass. And, you know, I, at the end of the day, you should see the confidence that Nelson has so all these guys playing with him. Okay, Jeremy drops the pass. That's not something you're used to seeing anyway, so it's not something that I'm, I feel Nelson would get upset about um, regardless of, how, of what happened. He's going to look for the next play. He ends up finding the next guy who we just spoke about, Rico, again in the end zone. So I feel Nelson has nothing to worry about as long as he has his guys on the field making plays happen. Now we're going to have them, Ruben, getting the ball in his third possession. He wasn't able to score in the first two. Ruben's going to throw a pass and make for a short game. Then he's going to follow up with a pass on the sideline for a few yards. Then he's going to follow up with a pass to Chaito for a nice game. Then Ruben's going to find, go to the front of the end zone. Footfish is going to be dropped, taking us into the half. Fish got to make this catch. He's not able to make the catch. He drops it. It's going to be taking us into the half 14 nothing. And this is an opportunity loss. They had to. This is the best opportunity to point to the board to end the half. They lose the opportunity. Now SYS is keeping their momentum. And heavy hitters are in trouble at this point. They have to do something because if you're able, if you're not even able to put points up when you have the, the, the best opportunity, it's going to be a long game for them and it's not going to end well. We're going to take this into the half and we're going to listen to what heavy hitters have to say in their huddle. Both, both teams are pumped, both teams are ready to come. It seems like Ruben feels that they didn't expect SYS to be as talented as they are. I don't. I guess he didn't get the memo because everybody knows that YMM guys combined with SYS to actually give SYS a championship team. So he said they underestimated it and I think they did. And that just goes to show that a lot of people really don't really pay attention to these guys coming from the Bronx. They don't look at them to say that they're elite talents like the guys in Brooklyn. But I feel like that's a mistake because these guys play at a high level and they can compete with a lot of these guys out here in Brooklyn. So there's some people that you should um, respect and actually pay attention to. And if not, at least uh, situations like this with heavy hitters down in the game. Definitely, man. We're going to jump into the second half where SYS is going to get great field position from a bad onside kick by heavy hitters. And what I don't understand about this is they're down 14 nothing. You're taking a shot to try to get the ball back. But if you don't get it, you get terrible field position. And that's exactly what happens. They're giving Nelson half of a field when they couldn't stop him on a full field. So now Nelson's going to throw a short pass to Ray for a few yards. Then Nelson's going to follow up with a pass to Ray in the end zone for the touchdown, giving up a 20 minute lead. And this got to be on that end, going on side, giving Nelson half a field to work with. And you, all you're doing is just skyrocketing Nelson's confidence because now you're giving him great field position. Now he doesn't have much to worry about because even if he makes a turnover, he knows his defense is going to get him back the ball with great field position again. So all you're doing is doing the other team favors. And now he's putting points on the ball. He's bringing other teams, other guys like Ray into the game. Now you're in trouble that you didn't need at this point because now they're pretty much doing whatever they want. Group is going to get the ball now and he's going to throw to Chaito for a nice game and then he's going to end up finding Bates in the end zone for the touchdown 20-7 to and this is why they brought Ruben in. Ruben 
score points when he takes his time, when he gets comfortable, he can score points, fine makes him for the touchdown 20 to 7. Heavy is a coming trying to get back into it. And as soon as I finally get it together, they're able to get the offense going. One thing I noticed is that they they rush the offense and they actually, you know, was quick to hike a lot of plays and catch SYS off guard. Maybe it's something that they can keep doing because that drive worked. Obviously the other drives didn't. Maybe they have something with this they need to keep trying and put um, trying to catch up in this game. On the next play, Machine is gonna have a nice block on the throw off. That's a great block by Machine. I love Machine. He's one of the most physical players in this league and he showed it here. Great block by Machine. I had to give the man his props. And obviously you see the guy trying to make a play on the other team and he didn't see Machine coming to make that block. He makes a great block on him. There's nothing else you can say. That's just Machine showing how physical he is no matter what team he plays on. Nelson's gonna throw to a wide open Jeremy in the middle of the end zone, but it's gonna be a little high and incomplete. Del Nelson's gonna throw shot to Jeremy, who's gonna run it and extend the ball in for the touchdown, giving him a 28 to 70, and now we basically got a laugh going on. And pretty much, like you said, it is a lot because they're doing whatever they want. Now Jeremy's making up for the drop that he had earlier. Now he has um, now he has a touchdown. It seems like everybody's trying their best to put points on the board um, themselves, and it's pretty much them having a field day on heavy hitters defense right now. Now you're gonna have Boomer getting the ball back. He's gonna throw a pass who makes for a nice game. Then he's gonna throw the J in the middle for the end zone, putting him back in the game. Making it a little bit close, I'm not going to say back, but, but in the game 28-14, they score, Ruben needed to do this a little earlier, it's a little too late, but he's trying to fall back in this game. But like I said in the first drive, they rushed the off, they rushed the defense, they rushed the offense, they got a lot of plays off quick, and they were able to put points up with SYS um, being caught off guard. That's something that they need to look into because if they would have this early, maybe this would have been a different game. Unfortunately, it comes at the time where the games are already about to wind down. This is something that they, um, they should have done a long time ago. Nelson's going to get the ball back again to throw the Rico for a nice game. Then Nelson slotted up to the throw the machine short. And after that, Nelson's going to find Sky in the back of the end zone for the touchdown and the win 34-14. Great win by SYS. They're going to move themselves up now. So I believe 5-0, undefeated, still haven't been beaten in this division, and they're looking great right now. And they're doing their job. Everybody's gelling together. SYS's defense is actually doing their job. They're getting everything done. They're making plays, and their offense looks very comfortable. Nelson looks like probably some, he's been playing some of the best football I've seen him play and, you know, in his young career. So this is not looking good for a lot of the teams that they're playing against because with a young team like this, Playing so well, like I keep saying, sky's the limit for them, and they're showing it again in this game. And that being said, talking about Nelson, we're gonna have an interview with Nelson. We're gonna go on to the interview with Nelson, quarterback of SYS, and then we'll be back. What's going on, people? I'm here with Nelson, quarterback of SYS. Do five touchdown passes, 35. You want 34, seven. Why are you seeing to be in the rhythm today? Uh, to be honest, it's just a team, the team game. Everybody's opening up things for other things. You feel me? Like, like, if I hit the seven to stop, that's just opening something else that I want in the other day in the game. It's a teamwork thing. Everybody knows that they're feeding off each other. Everybody's working off each other, so they're going to feel good even if they don't catch that pass. People say when you have fun playing the game, you're dangerous. Mm -hmm. What's the difference when you're throwing out here with this team other than the other teams that you're throwing? It seems like here you have fun. What's the difference? Uh, there's no difference. The only thing with my brother, I feel like sometimes I want to get the job done. I'm just a little too antsy. But that's something I'm getting better at, you know, and we getting better as a team, playing with each other, you know, so better things is a congested team. You see, not only a part of this, that's why it's a family, hang out together, chill together. What's that like, being a being family on and off the field? That's, that's a huge reason why we five for like five and no, because it's a family thing. We chill on the field, we chill off the field. We eat together, we sit at the table together, we play 2K together, we argue together. That's a family thing. Nothing, no hard feelings. If you don't get the ball, that game is all right. The next game you might get it. That's how it is. That's S how it works. That's why it's going for that undefeated season. We just trying to win a chip. That's all we trying to do. Good answer. 
Well, we're going to wrap it up. Nelson here, five touchdown passes. SYS with the blowout win, 5-0. See you on the site. Thank you. The kid is confident. I mean, he, he feels, he had, when he's having fun, this kid could be dangerous. He can run, he can make all the throws, and he's tall. So he can see over any ball giver. So this kid is definitely, like you always say, sky's the limit for Nelson's progress. And with the heavy hitters, they just came off a win previously coming into this game. And they're going to take a, you know, I wouldn't say a heartbreaking loss. They didn't have their full team. They didn't look like the team that we expected them to be. And now they get to an idea of what SYS got and preparing them for the playoffs. Yes, and I feel like this is a game that's not only a wake-up call, but now you get to see what formula works, what formula doesn't against this team. Now you're more prepared when you play them against them again in the playoffs because certain things worked, certain things didn't. They caught them actually twice on the hurry-up offense, so maybe that's something that they have something with there that's something that we've never seen SYS really get caught off guard on, but something like that. We haven't seen the team try that so far. Right. They try it and they put 14 points up. That's good. Even though they came up with the loss, that's something that they can look to and build on in the future. Well, it wasn't no real big plays in this game, but what I say is the frame of the game has to be the block by Machine. This was a great block, and when you have a name like Machine, this is the reason why. Yes, because pretty much once you see it coming, you better get out the way. It's like there's nothing that's nothing else gonna happen between there's nothing else that can happen between besides you getting cleaned out there and machine is out there cleaning up, game in, game out, putting guys on the ground, and there's another play that shows that. And that has to be the frame of the game. And if you actually was to look at the unedited version of Real Tough Talk, you would see me hit ghosts like this all the time. <laughs> I say that every time we go to break. That's what I do to him to wake him up because, you know, he seems like he needs his clock clean. I don't even know where you get that from. You can't even move half the time. Look at you out there roughing in the field. You can, yo, you barely can run and keep up with the players now. So how do you think you can keep up with me trying to hit me? Get out of here. Don't, even, don't even try it. Like I said, you saw the kick two weeks ago. That was a great <laughs> kick. If you watch the play, show. Let's not bring up that example. Please don't do that. All you're doing is making yourself look worse right now. Well, that's being said, SYS comes away with the big win. Sky's the limit for this team, but definitely a top team in this division. Next game up is going to be Blackout versus Super Friends. Now, as you saw in the beginning of the show, we gave you, Rube, um, not Rube, I'm sorry, Lou's statement, basically telling the league that nobody can beat Blackout. You gotta ask yourself, is he being cocky or is he being confident? We're gonna talk more about that after we see how the game goes, but we're gonna talk about the Blackout team in general, coming in off of a forfeit win to the Browns, and Super Friends coming up a forfeit win to the Browns also, because Browns dropped out the league. Now let's get with Blackout. To me, Blackout is a great team. Brian is a good quarterback, and when you have these receivers on the team that they have, a Breezy, a Canarsie, a Alex, you're going to score a lot of points. And that's pretty much all you can say, because th that's just top tier talent right there. Three guys that's, a that's able to dominate the, um, the offensive side of the ball. And Brian being a quarterback that's, you know, good himself. But when you have talent like that, it just skyrockets your confidence and you're able to throw that much better and make, um, play that much better knowing that you have guys like that can, that can back you up on offense. But Super Friends, to me, they have one of the top quarterbacks in the league in Dion, a.k.a. Tony Romo. This guy can run, he can make all the throws, and he finds a way to make big plays, but he also usually, just like the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Romo, finds a way to make a mistake to kill his team sometimes. And sometimes all it takes is that one mistake that can cause your team to lose. And you would rather a quarterback be mediocre throughout than a quarterback to be dynamic one minute and then make a mistake that can cause you the game the next. Because that's something that can really affect the whole the whole atmosphere of your games moving forward. But he also has weapons on the team with him. He has TJ, who's a very good receiver. He has b -Roy, who's basically a wide receiver specimen. If you look at this guy, he's about 6'4", two and some change, definitely built like a wide receiver. 
So there's no reason why he's not able to score points. And he also has, to me, an underrated um, show who's definitely a great receiver. So he has a lot of weapons. And he has also um, um, Disco. I'm sorry. Disco, who was a guy with experience. I like to call him a Reggie Wayne you know, type receiver. So he got people that can put up points. So there's no reason why Super Friends can't be able to keep up with Blackout scoring-wise. So that being said, we're going to jump into the game. Brian's going to get the ball first. He's going to throw to Alex in the middle for a nice game. Then he's going to follow up with a pass to a wide open loop in the end zone for the touchdown. 7 nothing, And we see Blackout score quick with Lou. It's not no Alex, not no Breezy, not no Canarsie. It's Lou who is a big target and makes a touchdown here. And that's just Brian being on point and starting early. You know, starting his game right, making the plays that he needs to. And that was pretty much an easy drive, unanswered by Super Friends, pretty much on um, their defense. They just stole, it looked like they just strolled into that end zone. And that's not something that you would want going moving forward for Super Friends. They have to do something to stop that. Because that was too easy for them. Now you're gonna see Dion get the ball. He's gonna throw the show for a short game and follow up with a pass to show in the end zone for the touchdown 8-7, getting them right back in the game. And this is the stuff that Super Friends need to do. They can score with them, they can battle with them, and they score here. And this is something, okay, your, your, your defense wasn't able to stop from the first drive, but your offense comes right back on the field and strikes back. Well, if you can have an offense that can do that against Blackout, it's gonna, it, it looks good and it looks good for you, and you may have a good game moving forward if you can keep up with them like this. Well, to me, Blackout does not have a terrific defense. They have Alex playing safety, and I think that's the guy you gotta attack. Alex can jump out the gym, but he's not the fastest guy. So I think you attack Alex, make him make the plays, make him guard some of the fast receivers, and that's how you attack this Blackout defense. That's my aspect of how you attack it. Now, you're gonna have Brian get the ball back. Remember, it's eight, seven, super friends. You're gonna have Brian get the ball back. He's gonna throw to Alex in the middle for a nice game. Then Brian's gonna roll out and throw a pass. So number one is gonna make a nice catch and stay in bounds at the 10 yard line. Great play by him. Then Brian's gonna throw a pass to Alex and it's gonna be tipped and intercepted by Pratt, giving the ball back to super friends. And I like Pratt. But a guy follows the ball, he's physical, and he finds a way to make plays, he makes a play here. And right when you think that Blackout is going to score another, another drive, the um, Super Friends make a play. Fred follows the ball as it gets tipped, and he's able to come up with an interception. That's the way to capitalize on defense to get your offense back on the field. Maybe this is the drive that they need to go ahead against Blackout. Deion is going to get the ball back, and he's going to throw a pass to show. Show's gonna tip it and then it's going to be intercepted by Alex. Who's gonna run it back for the touchdown? 13-8. Who is this on? Is this on Show or is this on Dion? I think it's pretty much on Dion. That was just a bad throw to the point where your receiver was only able to put one hand on it. But I think that if you're able to at least put one hand on it the way that you that, that he did, I feel like you're supposed to be able to at least come down. Alright, man, which one? You just said it's Dion, listen, but you're saying I, if he got a hand on it, listen, he got to catch it. Either Who, way, what is it? listen, I would say you don't put your receiver into position to have to go that far to get the ball. So yes, this goes back on Dion because if he was able to make a more accurate throw, we wouldn't even have this, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. Well, like I said before, Dion is the Tony Romo of touch football, especially in the BQFL. He can help you or he can hurt you. And this way he hurts you. You just got the interception. Your team has the momentum. Your team is fighting for you. And you turn the ball over, giving it back. And you allow Alex to run it back for a touchdown with good block. And the crazy part about it was, this is not a frame of the game. So imagine what we're looking forward to. This is not a frame of the game. He ran it back for a touchdown after the interception, and it's not a frame of the game. Eight, um, 13, eight, great pick on my eyes. Deion is going to get the ball back. He's going to throw a short to H to TJ with nice blocks by Vic. He's going to run in there for a touchdown, 16-13. Now, this is what you do. This is the game of football. Like I said, he may hurt you, but he can also help you. Deion makes a play, takes what the defense gives him, finds TJ. He's going to find nice blocking because people underestimate his speed. Touchdown, 16-13. 
super fresh right back in the game. And that was just a well set up play, and that's just a great way for the offense to stay on the play. Everybody committed to it, rather than you just watch the receiver go out and run for a few yards. Everybody committed, they went. You see Vic um, with, with some nice blocking, helping their team, you know, um, put points up. That if it wasn't for that block right there, I think that um, TJ would not be able to get into the end zone. So I think that's a great play by Superverse to stick with it to the play and help his man on his dog with the receiver running in for the end zone. Brian is going to throw a nice pass to the seat on the sidelines. I think that's Canarsi on the sidelines for a huge game. Then Brian Brian's going to throw to Lou in the middle for a short game, moving the ball. Then Brian's going to find Ruben in the end zone for the touchdown, putting Blackout back into the game with the lead. 21-16, Breeze is going to get the two-point conversion, but that's going to put them up 21-16. Great play, to score right back, they're here to fight, this is a great game. It was a great offensive game, we haven't really seen too many defense, other than just some tip interceptions or things like that. It's just the offense battling back and forth, they're putting points up, and it's just going to look, it looks like it's just going to be a shootout to the end because None of the defense have really been doing, able to do much other than getting some lucky tips here, sticking with the ball, making plays here, but they're not really locking down anybody, and that's why we're having such a high scoring game. I just want to talk about their weapons. I know we talk about Canarsi, I know we talk about Addison, I know we talk about Breezy, but Lou and Ruben make plays too. Angel makes plays too. This blackout offense has a lot of weapons, and they're dangerous in this, in this division and they're going to put the points up for the touchdown. Deanna's going to get the pass through the ball back. He's going to throw a pass over the receiver and score to pick, be picked off by Alex. Alex's second interception of the game. Turnover by Deion, his second. Definitely Tomo Romo like it. And this is a momentum, uh, a momentum killer pretty much because right when you need it to, um, to answer back, Deion makes a bad throw. Just like how we've been talking about one of those mistakes that can really kill your team happens here, what a bad throw thrown, thrown by Dion and Alex capitalizes with the interception. This is not something that you need at this point because this can cost you the game. Brian's going to throw another pass here as he gets the ball back. As his uh, defense has gotten the ball back, he's going to throw a pass to Canarsi. He's going to make a nice catch for a decent game. And this is why he broke Canarsi. These are things Canarsi can do. He's a nice one-two punch with Alex and when you got Breezy sliding in between them, they able to make the big plays. This offense is unstoppable. Great play here by Canarsi. Brian's going to throw pass in the end zone, but it's going to be incomplete. Taking this into the halftime, 21-16, we have a lot of points to be scored. And like I said, until that play by Alex was made for the interception, we haven't really seen too many lock, too much lockdown defense. We haven't seen the defense shut any offenses down on either side. we just seen a shootout all the way up to the half. Well, we see Alex have two interceptions. But those are mistakes from the court. And then we see Pratt have one. So we've seen a few turnovers, but you don't have turnovers that still have score 21 16. That means there's a lot of offense going on. And it's pretty much the offense is not only scoring, but making mistakes themselves to get defensive uh, make defensive plays happen. So it's not because the defenses are playing great, all it is is because they're there at the right time, at the right moment to make a play. But it's just their offense and their quarterbacks making mistakes. We're going to jump into the second half. Super Frank's going to have the ball members 21 16. Deanna's going to throw a short pass to show for a few yards. Then Deanna's going to follow up to Fred for a short game, but they're going to pick up the first down. Deanna's going to throw a pass to TJ at the 10 yard line. And then Deanna's going to follow up with a pass to Vic in the front of the end zone for the touchdown 24 21 after the two point conversion by Fred. 24 21. Great play by Dion, scoring right back when he gets the ball back. I like Dion, like I said, the Tony Romo up touch football. Great play by Dion. And if, if he's able to cut down on the mistakes and, and put points on the board like this, help them move the ball, keep them on the board by scoring, this is um, a game that they can actually win all the way up to the end. But it, he has to keep it clean and not make any more mistakes because that, those be momentum kills that they cannot afford to this point. Brian is going to get the ball back after just uh, prime time, I'm not prime time, I'm sorry, after Super Friends just scored. 24-21 is the score. Brian is going to throw a pass short to number 13. We're going to pitch it back to Brian. We're going to run it for a short game. Brian's showing a little bit of wheels moving. 
right there. Then Brian's gonna throw to number 25 for a nice gain and follow up with another pass to the receiver for a few more yards. Then Brian is gonna run it in the end zone for the touchdown, 26-24, showing that he can run the ball. He just ran it a few plays earlier, runs it again here, puts some right back in the lead, and we got a back and forth game right now. And pretty much Brian's doing whatever he has to do to get his team up in this game. They score a touchdown just by him, you know, strolling into the, to the end zone with defense worrying about him throwing a pass. All he does is run to the right where nobody's really expecting it and he runs it in for the easy six points. I feel like they're doing whatever they have to come up with this win. Obviously, it's not going to be a defensive game, but their offense is here to win the game for them and they're doing a good job of it right now. Now we at the game is 28-24 blackout. Deion's going to hit the ball. He's going to throw it to TJ. TJ is going to bow the ball and it's going to be picked off by the ball game of Poppers. Definitely a great pick. Nice yardage after the pick. Great play by Poppers there. Gets a big interception to stop um, prime, uh, to stop Super Friends right in the tracks. And this was the momentum killer of the game at this point because this is not something that you would need this late in the game. Dion throws a pass to TJ. I feel like it was a little bit low, but TJ no. has responsibility. TJ has experience. He's been here. He has played these games. He has to hold on to the ball. And he bothered it so badly that the ball game was able to get the pick off because Poppers is very good at turning the play as a giver. And he's at the right place at the right time, gets the big interception, and that has to be the frame of the game. I think so too because this is a play that happened right at the right moment for Blackout. And it was a momentum shift for this game because um, had, not, had that not have happened, Maybe Super Friends would have been able to take a, go ahead in this game because they were driving pretty good up until this point when that mistake was made by the receiver TJ. Something that you can't afford. I can't blame Dion on that one because I think that was a sound pass that TJ should have caught and he did it and it ends up in the interception. Brian's gonna end up getting the ball back. Remember, they're up 28-24. And Brian's gonna throw a pass to Addis in the end zone for the touchdown, giving him even more lead. 35-24, and if Alex does not win, an MVP is highway robbery. This guy has been dominant from the beginning of the season to now, and I don't see anybody taking an MVP from him. I mean, things can happen, but in my voice, my vote, this guy is definitely MVP doing it on both sides of the ball. What? He already has two interceptions, one of them has a run back, and then he has a touchdown. I mean, two, I mean, what do you do? How do you not get this guy MVP? But honestly, in my opinion, I think you're more worried about him getting the MVP than he is. He wants a championship. And this is what he's here for. This is what he's playing for. And I don't feel an MVP is an award that matters once you win a championship. Because this is what his job pretty much. This is what he's doing. He's bringing his team. He's leading his team any way he can to get a championship. He's showing you in this game just like he shows in every other game. I'm going to call the spade a spade. And the way these guys have been playing, I think it's his award to lose coming down the next few games and in the season. It's his award to lose. He's been dominant the whole year. He's doing it on both sides of the ball, and he's doing it again here, making plays when he has to. Deion's gonna get the ball back. Remember, now they're down 35-24, they're down 11. Deion's gonna throw the pass to TJ on the sideline for a few yards. Then he's gonna follow with that to a pass to TJ in the middle for a few more yards. Then he's gonna throw a pass to a wide open Fred in the end zone for the touchdown, 35-30, and they're back in the game trying to get into the lead, but they get back into the game. Yes, they actually stay keep the, keep the game alive for themselves after losing that momentum um, in that last drive. But they still get in the game. Now they have to do to buckle up and do a couple things to actually steal this game from the uh, from blackout. But they still have a chance. They're in it. They just gotta do everything right at this point. Super Friends is gonna go try to get an onside kick, and it's going to be a terrible throw, -off. giving them giving Blackout half the field. Brian is gonna use that as an advantage. He's gonna find Angel in the end zone for the touchdown, 42-30, pretty much ending the game. Deion's gonna to try to go for a Hail Mary, it's gonna be incomplete on the next play, and it's gonna pretty much end the game. It's gonna be 42-30, great win by Blackout. And I feel like at that point, you already saw with that momentum killer, with Papa's interception, there was no recovering from that. Yes, they were able to score on that last drive already, but you already saw 
that Blackout was not even worried about them once they scored that touchdown. I think it was pretty much over at that point. When you have to go onside on a desperate play like that to try to win a game, that's when you show that it's out of your hands now. Not I mean, that, it's not out of your hands. I mean, they needed the onside kick to get no. the ball back, but it was a terrible no. onside kick. But listen to my point. But when you push the game to that point, then chances are you're, there's a high percentage you're going to lose. Because they had the game already before that Papa's interception. So well, I mean, they didn't have it. They, they was trying. No, they was meaning trying they were in the game. If yeah. they kept their momentum going, they could have took the lead. They could have took the lead. Yes, yes, but they true. didn't do that because they lost the momentum with that play. So even though they were able to score to keep the game respectable, I felt it was over at that point. Regardless of what happened, they already lost that momentum, and that's why that onside, um, that onside necessarily didn't swing that way. I feel like when you play the right way, things happen for you. Obviously, they didn't do so towards the end of the game, and obviously, they didn't get that onside because of it. Well, I mean, listen, you, we, we're gonna first of all, we're gonna jump into the interviews. We're gonna um, we're talking to um, Alex, and we're gonna talk to Papa. So let's get to the interviews and find out, and we'll come back. What's going on, y'all? Stephen J here with Blackout with the 42-30 win. Alex, we seen you pick the ball off and take it back to the house. What you saw during that play? Uh, the play before that was, you know, the miscommunication by me and my safety, Jay. We fixed the defense. We played, we, we shadowed the middle. The corners took theirs. Put it in the middle. We caught it. Followed my blockers. Because you're not known for speed. <laughs> Poppers. Game changing pick. We didn't see you put a lot of pressure on the quarterback today with your sacks, but you made a great pick to pretty much seal the game. Take me through that play. No, I'm just listening to what they tell me. They tell me just it's gonna come. The time's gonna come. Just go hard and that's it. And I just when he got when he threw it, I attacked whoever, whoever's getting that ball. Tell me the feeling when you caught that pick. I had to make sure I had it. I'm going anywhere. Because if I dropped, I ain't gonna hear that. Fuck around and push it home. I ain't gonna hear the end of that. If I drop it by him, especially. Alex, one more question. Huh? Y'all got a lot of weapons. Breezy, Carnarsi, yourself. Yeah. Well, what are y'all trying to say to the BQFL? We here. That's it. Like we took the B last year. We're gonna take the B and the C this year. When we together and we got hundred percent and everybody's here, I don't see nobody stopping us. And Luke, because you're a scary guy. And you fucking with us. Nobody in this league is fucking with us. Nobody. Take it a game at a time, that's it. We can end it like that. See y'all on the site, blackout with the big win, 42 to 30. Definitely. Uh, lose confident, you know, and like I said, you got to ask yourself, is it confidence or is it cockiness? And listen, they won this game 42-30. They score points, you know, they're not really known for shutting people down, but they made turnovers. I see three turnovers, three interceptions that Dion threw, two of them was his fault, one wasn't. TJ dropped the other one that got picked off by Poppers, pretty much still in the game. And, um, you know, Blackout has a reason to feel confident. You got a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons, and you got a lot of toughness that this team is not scared of anybody. So you're not going to intimidate them. But you have to be able to score points on them because their defense is not going to hold you. But then it's hard to shut them down. So if I'm Lou, I, I, I would say he's being confident. You know, and when you're his size, you know, you can be a little cocky. But I think there's, he's being confident because... He looks at the type of team he has, and he has confidence in the team. What do you think? And I would say, I don't look at it as that they are an undefeatable team, that nobody can beat them. I feel like they're a team that finds ways to persevere, even in close games like this. Because this was a close game up until the end, when certain plays happen in their favor. You know, so I feel like they're not an undefeatable team, but they're a team that fights and, and keeps the game in their favor regardless of who they play against and I feel like that is a good formula for a championship team in the making. But Super, super Friends, this is a game that they could have had themselves. They they were in the game, they were contending, they were competing and they actually, you know, battled with them in terms of the points on um, that they put up. So I'm not going to say that the blackout is here, they're shutting down every team at all. Um, all together, but they're a team that find ways to win even when it's a close game. Well, uh, B Roy didn't touch the ball. No, I didn't not. see him get a pass. So that's on Dion. There's no way you have this man who's a great receiver, definitely got hype, definitely could get the ball, and he doesn't touch the ball. 
That's ridiculous. And that's I got to get on coaching for that. Coaching staff has to find a way to get this man involved in the offensive attack. You cannot have B, uh, B Roy not touching the ball or maybe even having one or two balls thrown in his direction. You got to move him around. You have to get the matchups. You got to get Alex guarding him. You know what I mean? And that takes Alex out the place. So you can have guys like TJ making plays. You can have a guy like Show making plays. You can have a guy like Disco making plays. That's what you got to do. So I got to really put this game 50% on Dion and 50% on the coaching staff. Tone has to take this one. He brought his team. They brought his team back to win a championship. And you're going to have to face Blackout to win a championship. And the way they looked, they didn't look like they were ready to play. They kept it in the beginning, but then Dion is going to make mistakes. He's known for that. That's what he does. He's going to make a great play, as you saw, with the nice dump off pass to TJ. But then he's going to make a bad play, which you saw with the three interceptions he threw. Two of them was his four overthrown passes. So you got to be on the point as you Dion trying to get to the next level. That's on him and the coaching staff. And that pretty much sums it up. I mean, these are things that they should know about going, going into this point in the, in, in the season and playing teams like Blackout. You have to use every type, every weapon that you have and use, like, utilize it properly because if not, then that's one less weapon you have to go to when you're playing against a stacked team like Blackout. You have no other forms of attack when you're lessening yourself from using the weapons that you have. You're making your job harder, and that's exactly what they did in this game. Well, that being said, they lost this game. Blackout with the big one, 42-30. They're moving up. They're still going. Lou's confident. The rest of these guys confident. We're going to have to see what happens next week. Next game up is the last one. We're going to have Blackout versus Seahawks. Blackout is coming off of a loss to YG as Seahawks come in from a win to the Chiefs. A lot of people say, you know, the Seahawks are not a real contending team because they have crisis throwing. He's not known as a big arm guy. But I think, you know, he, he, he you don't need a championship, a caliber quarterback to win a championship. As long as he limits his turnovers and makes the throws he needs to make, this team can win. They got players like Speedy. They got Fish. They got guys who can make plays if Crisis doesn't try to do too much. And then on Black outside, you already know what team that they have. The difference is on this team, they have Black throwing. Black tends to make a few more mistakes than Brian makes, but he definitely has a stronger arm than Brian. That's my opinion. And sometimes that stronger arm is what may lead to bigger players on your team. So, yes, you may take the risk of him making more mistakes, but when he's able to make up for it with a better arm, sometimes that cancels out the negatives with, with more positives. Crisis, like you said, you said that if he doesn't try to do too much, he's able to get the job done. And sometimes that's all you need, a quarterback that's able to play and not do too much, but play at, you know, to make sure his guys make plays for him. You know, not necessarily to take the game on for himself. He doesn't have to be that type of quarterback. Right. Just make those um those throws that he's supposed to, the dump off throws, a few yards, chop up the field, and he should be fine going moving forward. What well, we're gonna jump off um with Seahawks getting the ball first. Christ is gonna throw a nice pass in the middle to receive it for a nice game. Then he's gonna follow it up with a nice short game for a few yards, and then follow that up with a pass to Tony in the end zone for the touchdown, six nothing, and that's exactly what we were talking about. Him scoring taking easy short throws, not trying to do too much, and scoring points he does it here. And he's able to connect with his receivers. That's another thing you have to do. Make sure you know where your receivers are going, you know, have them doing some nice routes where you can track them and, you know, get, create some gaps where you can make easy passes. And it looks like they do that here. He's able to move it down the field for the, for the score. That's a great way to start the game. Black is going to throw short to Aiden for a few yards. Then he's going to roll out to the right and throw a short pass to Aiden who's going to run there for a nice game. Then Black is going to throw it deep to Ruben in the end zone. It's going to be tipped, bobbled, and then picked off by Fish, giving the ball back to the Seahawks. And that, to me, is going to be the play of the game, the frame of the game. Because size-wise, Ruben is way better bigger than Fish. Ruben is like 2+. plus. Fish is like a buck 10 wet. If that much. He looks like he's about Steph Curry, 90 pounds or so. But he's going to make a great reaction, 
Great reflexes to tip the ball, get it to himself, and pick it off. Great play by Fish, got to be a friend of the game. And that was just all athleticism right there. It wasn't necessarily that he was playing great coverage, but he knew that he was able to make a play on that ball. He's able to um, adjust and able to get to it, get a hand in, tip the ball. As he tips the ball, Ruben falls from the contact of, of Fish going for the ball, and Fish is left there for an easy interception and decent, uh, um, decent yards after the play. That's just a, a play all created by Fish's athleticism. That was all him right there. He made that play happen for himself, and that's the definite point of the game. And Christ is going to get the ball back. Remember, he's up 6 nothing. He's going to throw a pass, but it's going to be picked off by Breezy. Nice play by Breezy, giving the ball right back to Blackout after Blackout just got turned the ball over. And these are the mistakes that Crisis cannot make. He cannot throw this ball. It's a bad throw. Breezy is in the vicinity. You got to respect this guy's um, abilities and his athleticism. He doesn't do it here. Picked off by Breezy. This is why Blackout went and picked him up. And that's, and that's so bad when you have such a play like, like Fish's interception to be reversed right back from a mistake from Crisis throwing it right back to them. Breezy was pretty much waiting for that pass. He throws it right to him. He, 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 he took the bait and he was able to make a pass and Breezy was able to make a great play on it. That's a great interception by Breezy. Anticipating where the price is going, that's just him putting the, um, the blackout offense right back on the field. They didn't lose out on anything on the last play. Black is going to get the ball. He's going to throw the number 31 for a decent game. Then he's going to follow with a pass to Addison Enzo, but it's going to be knocked away by Kells. Great play by Kells. He also plays with the Rebels, but that's a great play here doing it for the Seahawks. Black is going to throw to Addison again in the end zone, but it's going to be knocked away and turned over, giving it back to Seahawks. So the pick does not hurt Seahawks. And this is what I'm saying about Black. Sometimes he makes a mistake. He has that ball knocked away by Kells. He has the next pass knocked away, and he's not able to pull up points. And that's the difference between him and Ryan. Black takes more chances. He tends to make more mistakes. He makes another one here. And one thing he didn't notice is third and fourth down, they were watching Alex. They were watching him. They kept track of him. They knew he was throwing to Alex, and they were able to make two plays on it to cause a turnover. That's something that you have to read when you're um, if you're black, knowing that they already have your number. They know that third and fourth down, you're going to Alex. So you have to find a way to move the ball somewhere else. Otherwise, it's going to lead to more turnovers like this. Christ is going to get the ball back. He's going to throw a short pass to Jealous for a short game. Then he's going to throw a pass on the sideline to the receiver who's going to make a nice catch for a decent game. Then he's going to throw a pass in the middle. It's going to be knocked away and turned over one down, giving the ball back to Blackout. Crisis not able to make certain throws, not able to make the time you throw, turn over the ball, gives it back to Blackout. And uh, that's an opportunity lost for the Seahawks. Every opportunity that they was given so far in this game, they pretty much dropped the ball on a lot of them, and they kept Blackout in this game. And this is something that you don't want to, to, to keep um, making a habit of because eventually Blackout is going to take the game away from you and it's pretty much going to be all she wrote. Black is going to get the ball back now. He's going to throw a pass to Alex in the end zone, but it's going to be dropped by Alex. Next play, he's going to throw a shot to Andrew. He's going to get in there in the red zone and follow up with a play too breezy for the touchdown. Tying the game 6 6. Now you've seen Breezy catch an intercept, get an interception, and then catch a touchdown. This is why they picked him up. This is why he's on the team. This is why other guys said this was NFL. They would take pay cuts to bring this type of player in because Breezy, the place he can make, Rebels really miss this guy. He can take you to the next level and he's doing it for Blackout now. And he's shown what type of player that he is. He's one person that can make something happen no matter what part of the field he's on. And that's something that um, when you're getting to the, the, the guys that's hurting you on defense to make plays on offense, now, if you're the Seahawks, it's not something that's looking good because now you're getting other players in the game other than Alex. And if this becomes a habit, this is going to be a game that you can't win at that point. We got a 6 6 tie. Christ is going to get the ball. He's going to throw a short to the receiver for a few yards. Then follow it up for uh, another few yards. The great hit is going to cause a short game. Then Christ is going to throw a low pass to number two, and it's going to be bobbled and picked off by Ruben. Bad throw by Crisis. He throws it low. That was the speedy. He throws it low to speedy. He's following the speedy the whole drive. This one he throws it too low. It's getting followed by him. Picked off by Ruben. Who was that on? 
I think that was definitely on crisis. I mean, we spoke in the last game about that play by Dion, um, his pass being um, intercepted, but this one was completely different. This play was clearly a low pass by crisis, and it makes the receiver have to try to scoop the ball. He could have got him killed too. Yes, that not only that though, but now the receiver has to scoop the ball, and that's a hard catch to make, a low catch like that. So he has to lift the ball, and if you don't have a good grasp on the ball, it's gonna go right in the air, and it's gonna give the defense a chance to make a play. That's exactly what happens, and it caused a turnover that was that was not needed at, at that time. Black is gonna throw the next pass to V88 for a nice game. Then Black is gonna throw to Alex in the end zone, it's gonna be broken up. Followed up with a pass to Canarsie in the end zone for the touchdown, taking us into the half, 13-6. This is Canarsie. Throw the ball up to him. He can make the a catch. 12-6. 12-6, I'm yeah. sorry. Throw it up to him. He's gonna make a, a, a play. Great catch by Canarsie. This is why they brought him in. You can't put all your attention on Alex when you have another guy who plays basketball, who can make the plays in Brooklyn, couldn't see touchdown. And now pretty much all these guys are getting into the game. They're making plays for this team. And I feel this is trouble now because now you have all these guys coming and doing their job, doing what they're here for. Now you lost your opportunity to sneak away and get ahead of this game because now it's pretty much um, business as usual for blackout and now the Seahawks are in uh, much uh, trouble that they didn't need at this point. Black is gonna, that's gonna take us into the half, 13, um, 12, 6. Second half, we're gonna come out, Black's gonna get the ball, he's gonna throw downfield to a wide open Ruben for the touchdown, 21, 6. Now they're trying to run away with it. Black comes right out of the second, in the second half and scores a touchdown. Love the way he's throwing, makes a great pass here. And Pretty, pretty much, I think this looks like a game that's pretty much going to be over quick because now they, um, the Seahawks have no way of answering Blackout's offense. They're able to do whatever they they want pretty much. And I feel like if the, the Seahawks don't do anything to challenge them at this point, it's pretty much a game over for them. Price is going to get the ball. He's going to throw a pass to number four for a short game. Then he's going to throw a pass in the end zone, but it's going to be incomplete. Turning the ball over, giving the ball back to Blackout. And this is just Crisis making terrible throws. He already threw three interceptions this game. And you can't play a team like Blackout in the C division and expect to make turnovers and stay in the game. You're not a high power quarterback. You're not going to score a lot of points. Your job is to be efficient with your throws, make the, the, the safe throws, and limit your turnovers. That is your game, Crisis. Let's try this again. Limit your turnovers, make the safe throws, let your defense help. That is your game. What frustrates me about these quarterbacks is they try to be something they're not. Do what works for you, what makes you good. And what makes him good is when he limits his turnovers, he makes the safe throws, that's what you do. You're not a guy with a big arm. You're not going to throw a 50-yard pass. That's not your game. But you can win being the type of quarterback you are. But unfortunately, you try to do more than what you can, and you're going to make turnovers. Black is going to get the ball back. Black is going to run for a decent game. Then follow with a nice pass to Breezy on the sideline for a decent game. Black is going to avoid the rush. He's going to throw a pass up. It's going to be interception by the Fish, but it's going to be offsides on the defense, which is going to cancel the interception. Then Black on five rushes is going to throw deep to Canarsie, but it's going to be incomplete. Then Black is going to throw a nice pass to Breezy to get to the red zone. Then Black is going to follow up with a pass to Big Blue in the front of the end zone for the touchdown and the win. 26-6 blowout by Blackout. And pretty much by the time Blackout took the lead, it was pretty much game over for the Seahawks because at that time, Blackout took up the whole momentum of the game. They were pretty much able to do whatever they wanted. Their offense was pretty much shooting and putting points up without any um, any signs of slowing down. And it was a game over for Seahawks because they had no way of answering back. Seahawks got to step it up. Crisis needs to revamp, recharge, and reboot. He is a decent quarterback. He's not an elite quarterback. We're not going to sit down and say something that's not true. But he's a decent quarterback. He can't win games if he plays his style. He can't attempt to shoot out. That's not his game. He's not a shootout quarterback. He's a guy that can run the clock. 
He's a guy that can make safe throws, and when he does that, he can win games. When he attempts to shoot out with a high power team, not going to work. When he attempts to go downfield with, with a good defense, not going to work. So why do something that's going to that's going to kind of throw off what you what you are? You know, you're sabotaging your own team. You can't do that if you're crisis. He had a lot of his own guys upset with him, frustrated because they felt they could have won this game. Blackout right now, it's on a roll. They're on a roll in the B, and they're on a roll in the C. And this team is going to be dangerous like a juggernaut to stop once they got momentum, and they got momentum right now. Yes, and they definitely have momentum. In both games that they played today, this is a team that didn't look like they were able to slow down for any given reason. They have guys that, that get the job done no matter what game they're playing, no matter what division they're playing in. And it seems like even though you have two different quarterbacks, the receivers are, are good enough that they can get the job done no matter who's the one throwing the ball. That being said, we're going to wrap up the show today. I hope you all enjoyed it. But we're going to give you the three frames of the game. You're going to have machines for SYS with the great hit the first game as a frame of the game. Great hit by machine getting involved in that team's physicality. Next one, you're going to have Papa's interception for Blackout, pretty much stealing the momentum away for the win for them in their next, in their game. Papa's with the great intro for his frame of the game against Super Friends. Then you're going to have Fish jumping over Ruben, getting all, all his contact, still able to have the great reflexes to get the interception. Unfortunately, it was in a loss, but he's going to do that for the Seahawks. That's going to be a third frame of the game. Great plays by these, these guys. They're the sweets frame of the games. We hope you enjoyed the show. I think I, I think I did a great job today. Thank you. I'm great. He's not. Thank you guys for, for, for watching the show. Listen, at the end of the day, those are some great plays. Plays that you can't see yourself doing anymore. The best you can do is that the horrible kick that you tried the last time you were out. That's the highlight of your life right now. That's the best you're going to get. So it's all downhill from here. Just look forward to that as you move forward. I got another one for y'all. I guarantee that at this week's game, after the game, the games are over, you'll see Real Tough Talk again doing a show after the games, like always. <laughs> you know, take another, I ain't doing no more kicks. Yeah, that's kicks the are best done. guarantee you could kicks ever do. Done. Because if you take... I was waiting for the risk that you was willing to take. Because everybody in this league is actually watching. A lot of people are watching right now. So they're paying attention to the risks and the bets and the wages that you make. And they're making sure that you honor them. Listen. They did on that kick. They're going to keep Stephen on doing it. Stephen J is here. So y'all want a little. Listen. Do you want a 40 yard dash? Or you want to see me catch some passes? Whatever. You do something on the field. And I'll back it up here. You want to thank y'all for.